Hey everyone, it's Rhea here, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how I use friendly competition to really believe I could solve those harder problems in Usico, even if I had no idea how to get started, and how this motivated me to work harder and to level up. And hopefully, by hearing my story and the story of others who have also used friendly competition to advance in Usico, you can use that in your Usico or your competitive programming journey to really give yourself the skills you need to move to that next level and the motivation you need to keep going when things get hard. Now, when I was getting started with Yusuko, there was someone who I was in friendly competition with. And I'm not going to really say her name because it's not relevant to the story. And frankly, I'm not even sure she knows I was in friendly competition with her. When I started out in the December contest, I was in Yusuko Bronze and she was in Yusuko Silver. Now, I knew her well enough and we had hung out quite a bit that I knew she wasn't significantly smarter than me, you know? We were about the same. And so I was like, okay, well, if she can make silver, then I can also make silver. And so I studied really hard and I made silver that contest. And that contest, she stayed in silver. She did not advance to gold. Flash forward to the next contest, the January contest. Well, I was in silver, and so was she, and I had thought that she was not going to make gold again, and she would have just stayed in silver. So I, know I didn't really work hard that contest, and it wasn't like a conscious effort, right? I wasn't consciously not working hard or anything. I was, you know, just doing what I normally do, but it, it more full felt like I wasn't surely confident that I could actually solve all these silver problems. I didn't really know anyone who could do them. And so, sure enough, I didn't end up making gold that contest. And then I was talking to her, I expected she probably had indeed that the questions were quite hard, turns out she had made gold. And so, I then looked at the contest results, and at that time, for Silver, they po posted the entire, for every person, the, all the test cases that they got correct. I looked at the one she got correct, and she had gone to some test cases correct that I thought were pretty hard. But once I knew that she got them correct, I went back to the problem, I read the solution, I was like, oh! This actually is not that hard. And because I had that frame of reference, that's someone I knew and I could relate to, and I saw her um, succeeding on the problems, I then started to believe that those problems were easier. And so I then, you know, changed the way I studied. And just simply having that belief, the belief that I can actually solve those silver problems, that made a huge difference in whether or not I was actually able to solve them. And it's not one of those weird, weird mind, voodoo mindset things or anything. This is like a legitimate, you know, a legitimate, um, thing that occurs, you know, placebo effect is, is a real thing. And in this case, it's a little bit less placebo and a little bit more so that like, if you truly don't believe you can solve a problem, then what's going to happen is when a problem gets a little difficult, you're just going to be like, okay, I'm stuck. But if you believe you can solve it and something is difficult, you're going to try to push through a lot harder. And because you spend the more effort trying to push through that hard part, you're going to be more likely to get it. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe you can solve a problem, you're a lot more likely to solve it. And that is kind of placebo effect if you think about it. So anyways, that next competition, um, I made gold. And she had stayed in gold. I was like, okay. And the next last competition, I really thought she was going to make platinum. Um, turns out she did not make platinum, she stayed in gold. But I thought she was going to make platinum, so I, I made platinum. Because when I was solving the gold problems, I really believed that she was able to get them. And so, even though she wasn't, it didn't really matter what she could or couldn't do. What it mattered was, was my beliefs on what I can or can't do. So that year, I had gone from bronze to platinum, which I was super excited about, especially given the case that, you know, by the second contest, I got a 233 in silver. I'd failed it miserably. And two months later, I was in platinum. And so I made other videos talking about the different ways I changed my study tactics, tactics too, right? Believing that you can solve it is a huge part of it, but it's not the entire part. Um, and you can check out those videos. I might link some of them in the description below. But the idea here is that like that friendly competition and it wasn't like I was rubbing anything in her face or she was rubbing anything in my face. I don't even know if she knows that I was I was competing with her in the background. But just having that um, having that belief that, oh, I can do it if she's doing it. You know, like, because I thought we were on a similar level. Now, the next year I was in platinum. And, well, she wasn't. And uh, so I needed some different competition to try to make camp. And again, it's not like I was actively seeking out competitions. Like, if I could go back and do it again, I probably would actively seek out for the competitions. Because now I know the power of it. But at that time, I was just in 10th grade, you know, not really actively seeking out anything. And I've been working with some other kids on Yusuko uh, in this one class. And they just became my friendly competition. We were all in platinum together. It's like, all right. You know, some of them were way above me. Some of them were kind of below me. The ones who were at my level, they were my friendly competition. It's like, okay. They can do it, I can do it. Um, and once I make camp, you know, then the other campers are my friendly competition and trying to be a multi-year camper. Because, you know, making camp two or three times is a lot harder than making it once. So we would take Code Forces contest together. We would look at the ranks and be like, oh, this problem, if, if so-and-so can solve it, then I could probably solve it too and I try to upsolve it. 
And so when we were doing contests, I will try to make sure that I solved all the problems that other people would solve. And, you know, like in contests too, it's a lot bigger effect. Like having a belief that you can solve a problem can really change whether or not you can actually solve it. For some people, obviously, it's like, they're way too above me. Just because they can solve it does not mean I can solve it. But there were some people who were near my level. And this really helped me get to camp. And yesterday I used to go camp. I was talking to one of my students there. And I'm not going to mention her name because, you know, she knows who she is. And I'm super proud of her. I don't think her name is relevant to the story. And I want to respect her privacy. And so I was talking to her in, in camp. And, you know, she would worked with me before. And apparently some of the students that she would worked with me in gold with, she's still in contact with them. And she still talks to them. And so just having that friendly competition can really help can really help someone out in in believing that they can solve those harder problems. And this might be one of those things where like maybe I solved this hard problem and you solved this different hard problem. And now I believe I can solve the one that you solved, and you believe you can solve the one that I solved, and we both leveled up together. And so friendly competition is a super cool thing to do. Now, here's some ways that you can apply this to you. The, f- the first thing I really want to say is you never want to be mean to anyone, right? I I'm not I'm not advocating rubbing things in people's faces or anything like that. It's not it's no way mean in any shape or form. And at least for me, the people I was in friendly competition with, I don't even know if they knew I was in friendly competition with them. I was just really using them as like a benchmark. Like if they can do this, I can do this too. The second thing I want to say is if you're doing this and you're trying to find someone to be in friendly competition with, don't just pick one person, pick multiple people. Because if you only pick one person, then you run the risk of, oh, if they stop, if they start working hard, if they stop working hard on Yusuko, or maybe they're like sick for a week, or they're busy studying for a week, extra busy with something or the other, then you're not really gonna have anything to push you to go forward, right? A lot of times, it's really easy to fall into the trap of, oh, I'm competing with someone else, and they're not doing that much, so I think it's okay for me to coast and not do that much either. And you don't want to fall into the trap. And the way to avoid falling into that trap is to have multiple people that you're in friendly competition with. If you're in friendly competition with, say, five people, you can really make sure that you can you can compete with, like, the highest person in that group, right? Because you want to be pulled up. And if there's someone who's, you know, maybe they made platinum, but then they, like, stopped competing as much, well, you don't want to, you don't want to go to that center if you're trying to make camp. And in lower divisions, even more pronounced, right? Someone in bronze... They might be very, you don't know how motivated they are to make silver. They might say they are, but you don't actually know how motivated they are until you see how much they're working. So it's just good to have several people. Now, where can you find such people? Well, there was a user code Discord. There was a um, competitive programming Discord too, where you can reach out and say, hey, does anyone be my coding buddy? And it really is like a buddy thing, right? You're really working together to, to boost both of your skills together. And so that's one way, good way to find someone. Another way is you can literally just pick someone on Code Forces who you think's about your level, has similar problems to you, and who's very active in solving problems. Just friend them on Code Forces and look at what they're solving and what they're doing and try to do that. And if you pick someone on Code Forces, you want to pick someone who's having a constant upwards trajectory, right? If their trajectory is flat, you don't want to pick them because what they're doing to study and solve problems is not really working for them. You want to pick someone with the upwards trajectory so you can sort of like um, copy what they're doing. I don't think that makes a buddy like super useful to have is like let's say my buddy solved this hard problem and I'm unable to solve it you can just ask them right especially if you're at similar levels they might get stuck in a problem and ask you that you could solve then you have to get stuck in a problem and ask them so finding a buddy on the, any of the discords is pretty good too another option is obviously you can join a class for your use code division now this is less for code forces and CP in general and this is more specifically for use code and you can just find people at your level, at your skill level, and, and work with them. And so there's, there's many options you have for this. Um, I think that is really a great way to keep your motivation up too, right? Because you're seeing someone else, you're working with them. It's exciting, it's fun. And the more fun it is, the more likely you are to spend time in it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe down below. And I'll see you in the next video later. Bye!